sitting comfortably. Good. Then we shall begin. You have tuned in to the Halloween edition of Lava Lounge. In my time, I have observed many different worlds of all kinds of nature. Tonight, we hope to immerse you in one of these worlds. This particular tale takes place on the Somerset Levels, a flat plain of land in the west country of England. In ancient times, it was submerged in water. To the weary traveler, the various hills and valleys would appear as islands. In our modern age, the levels are a landscape of marsh and farmland. However, if one were to wake at dawn or to rest at dusk, they would gaze upon an ocean of mist spreading throughout the levels, submerged again as in times of old. Despite its beauty, to many, a darkness has forever dwelled on the levels, rising like a giant out of the mist, presiding over all else is the Tor, once believed to be the legendary Isle of Avalon, the gateway to the other world, the land of the dead. <laughs> I can sense your skepticism what you will, that there is an unmistakable energy that lurks underneath the soil. We begin our story on a simple country lane. It's a crisp October morning. At this time of year, the land should be shimmering in shades of copper, orange and auburn. However, this particular morning is sodden. The surrounding fields are awash with dew. The granite road is smothered in mud. A fog hangs heavy over the Somerset levels. Detective Jack Plowman tries not to slip as he trudges up the lane. He's certainly shaky on his feet. He had one pint too many at the Rosen Crown the previous night, and now he's paying the price. So, are you sitting comfortably? Good. Please, sit back, plug in, and dissolve. Morning, Detective. You look like you were having a jolly old time with the Rosen Crown last night. One too many, had ye? Morning, Ted. 
Yes, as always. I didn't see you head off. But I know my limit, Jack. Unlike you, someone has to get up and feed the cows. <laughs> but, uh, what brings you up my way, Jack? Something to miss? I'm not sure. Uh, Mrs. Mills up the way. Oh, I, Sarah. Lovely girl. Yes. Well, uh, she called in this morning to say that her husband didn't come home last night. Dan? Dan's gone missing. Hopefully not. We'll have to see. Between you and me, Ted, I'm betting on a secret mistress on the other side of the levels. No, not Dan. He's not the type. Oh, come on. Everyone's the type. This is not bold well, Jack. This is not bold well at all. You don't think? What, Ted? I thought there was a strange notion this morning. The animals were restless. I even noticed there were no birds in the trees on the cells. Vanished. Like they didn't even want to make land. What are you getting at, Ted? I've been hearing things up and down the levels. Just some stories. But there's some sightings. Some as far as Whitmore. I mean, you know, I... I try to pay it no heed, but... It's hard not to when you've got livestock. You're really losing me here, Ted. <laughs> Don't mind me, boy. I'm simply reveling in old country spooks. Uh, not much use to a man of the law as yourself. I'm just praying no bad come to our precious parish, that's all. Don't worry, Ted. Not with me around. I well, said you were a man of the law, Jack. The laws of man. But there are very different laws that govern this land. Good day to you. It's an ill fall. Are you looking for my daddy? Hello. What's your name? Peter. Hello, Peter. Uh, my name's Jack. I've just come to have a chat with your mum. Is she around? Yeah, I think so. But she has been crying a lot. Oh, I see. Is that one of your chickens? Yeah. This one's pickled. Do you... Get nice eggs from your chickens. Something for breakfast every morning, Peter. Yeah, but they haven't laid any for a while. That's a shame. Why might that be? Because they're frightened. Frightened? Frightened by what? Stop it, Baxter, damn dog! Sorry, can I help you? Mrs. Mills. My name's Detective Plowman. I'm here in response to... to the call to the station you made this morning. Oh yes, of course. Come in quick, mind the bloody dog. Thank you, miss. Stay outside then, it's gonna be bloody nuisance. <sighs> T. 
Key detective? Chaos is spoiled. Yes, that would be lovely. Thanks. You from around here, detective? Well, from Dartford, originally. Just outside of London, but I've been down here for a good few years now. Know the area well? Well enough, for now. <laughs> yeah, there's certainly more to it than meets the eye. I did that. It might not be my place to say, Mrs Mills, but is your son okay playing out in the yard on his own? He won't come in. He says he's waiting for his daddy. I don't know what to tell him. Well, look, Mrs Mills, hopefully he won't be waiting for very long. Eh? Thanks. It's a bit early for the hard stuff, isn't it, Mrs Mills? Forgive me, detective, but not after the night I've had. Steadies my nerves. The only way I've got through the morning. You want some? Mm. <clears throat> uh, no, no, not for me. Thank you. Suit yourself. So, where were you when you last saw your husband, Mrs Mills? Right here. I was sat where you are now, and I watched him go out the door. Was this last night? Aye. What time, roughly? Around midnight. And, um, does your husband often leave the house at that time? He likes to go on his evening walks. He prefers the evenings because you can't hear the motorway as much. If you ask me, I, I think he goes then so he can have a fag and not catch an airfall from me about it. Right. Um, was there anything different this time before he went out? I, I guess so. Did you have a row? An argument of some kind? You know, it happens. I. Something like that. What was it about? I didn't... I didn't want him to go. You didn't want him to go for a walk? On the levels! I didn't want him to go on the levels! The levels? Does he usually walk there? No. Never. Especially not after dark. So, why was he going there? Did he say? Mrs Mills? Sarah, look. If your husband is involved in something, I have to know. There's something bad happening on the levels. Bad in what way? Evil. Complete evil. Go on. It's hard to say, Detective. This land knows darkness well. The Christians like to claim it for their saviour and his trinkets, but... Something older dwells here. And evil existed here since the levels themselves emerged from the floods. It's drawn to it. The energy running under the soil. The guidebooks like talking about witches living in caves and magic trees, but the, but the, the evil here is real, tangible. It's evil in us too, I guess. Why are we drawn to this place? You can see it in the eyes, the people around here. There's a lie going on, and they're all in on it. No wonder so many women were put to the fire or the rope in Taunton, Shepton, Mallet. It's the same people. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. 
No wonder Dan and I moved up here, away from the village. They'll go on pretending until it's too late. There's a new evil on the levels, detective. Even if it never really left. Right, Mrs. Mills, what are you meaning to say? You saw our dog, Baxter I. <laughs> uh, yes. Couldn't miss the warm welcome. Well, Baxter had a sister, Bessie. God damn, love that dog. What happened to her? About a week ago, she goes missing. Wake up in the morning and she's gone, vanished. Dan's pulling his hair out for days. She never runs off that dog. She always answers her master's call. Then he remembers she'd been acting all funny, like pawing, scratching at the door at night, barking and growling at the trees even when there's nothing there. It was like she could feel something. Whatever it was, it was always in the direction of the levels. So one morning, a few days back, Dan decides to go looking for her there and... He found her. Oi. He did. What was left of her? Her back was broken. Her throat had been torn out. And her face. My God. He only recognised her from the collar. Her snout was gone. Ripped off. Like she'd been eaten. Mrs. Mills, I didn't. Why didn't you report this to the police? Dan's like that. He likes to take matters into his own hands. Anyway, he didn't think the police would be able to handle it. Why not, Mrs. Mills? Your dog was obviously attacked. Oi. She was attacked. And Dan knows what did it. What did it? How would he know? What, did he see it? We heard it. We heard it. What did you hear exactly? We were sat here at this table. Peter's long been put to bed, so we're just chatting away. Then we hear it. It's quiet at first, then we realise where it was. What? A howl. A dreadful, terrible howl. Angry, but also in pain. It was so far, yet so close. It stole all of our sounds with it. Like a madman, but roaring through the mouth of an animal. <laughs> Mrs. Mills, do you realise what you're implying? Don't play fickle with me, detective. I can tell from more than just the way you talk that you're not from around here, but you know about the levels. Don't pretend like you haven't heard the rumours. No, 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 look, 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 I've had enough of this. I had the same cryptic nonsense from Ted Burgess on my way up here. Mrs. Mills, I need facts. That's why I'm here. It's how I operate. Rumours have their use, but I need to know why your husband was heading out to the levels at midnight. To kill it! He heard the howl and he knew it was the same thing that mutilated Bessie. So he swore to go and kill it. Kill it? With, with what? A spade? No! With a shotgun. It was my father's. Don't worry, it's licensed. He only ever uses it when the rabbits get into the veg. But last night he had two shells in the barrel and he figured enough was enough. And that was the last time you saw him? Yes. Detective, I'm so frightened. He hasn't come back. So 
I can only fear the worst. Okay, look, right, Sarah, I'm calling this in. We need to be looking for Dan now. I'm gonna need a full description. Any photos you have? Did Daddy go looking for the wolf man? Oh, Peter, my love. Don't take it to heart. Go outside. Daddy will be home soon. Wait a second. Peter, did you say wolf? Yeah. The wolf on the levels. Well, Peter, it simply can't be. There's been no wolves in this country for hundreds of years. But I saw it. What? You saw it? Yeah. Oh, God, no. Peter, Peter, tell me what you saw. Everything that happened. Well, I was in my bed, but I couldn't sleep. I knew Daddy had gone out, and I was waiting to hear him come back. Then, uh, I hear this sound coming from my window, like... Yeah. I thought it would stop after a while, but it didn't. Then it started to scratch. So I went over to the window to see what it was. It was really foggy, but when I got close to the glass I could see it. It looked like it was waving at me. But I think it was just trying to get through the glass. Oh, Peter. What, what could you see? I mean, it must have been very dark. It's eyes. Eyes? And tell me about the eyes, Peter. Uh, they were red. Big red eyes. Then what happened? It, it saw me. So it stopped scratching at the window and then just, it just stared at me. It felt like you would never stop staring at me. And were you scared? Yeah, I was scared. But I was more confused. Confused? Why? His hands. They were like a man's hands. Like your hands. <laughs> Are you alright? Oh god. I'm, I'm sorry. Don't mind me. <laughs> Mr. Plowman! Oh Jesus. Not now. Uh, can I get you something? Are you ill? I'm so embarrassed. Don't mind me, Mrs. Mills. Just had one too many of the Rose and Crown last night. <laughs> Detective! What's going on? Peter, fetch some water. Mummy! I'm fine. I think I just need some fresh air. Mummy! <clears throat> Peter, fetch that damn water! It's okay. I think it's dying down. Oh god. That was a close one. He ate me. What? He 
ate me. Who did? Who ate you? Him. Oh, my head. Now teach me to try and drink a fog on the table. Oh, Mr. Mills. <laughs> what? Right. Um, look. I guess we can call off the search party then. <laughs> what a strange morning, eh? He ate me. Was him, was it? I know this is very peculiar, but I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation. Peter? <laughs> Go fetch Farmer Burgess. Oh, boy. So, what happened next, Grandad? We sent every man from the village that we could muster. Some with rifles, the rest with anything they could find. Hammers, spades, axes. We scoured the moors for him for the best part of two weeks. Nothing. So what next? People started doubting the mills, thinking their story was some hoax. Some even thought they'd had a disagreement with the detective, killed him, buried him out back, and made up this whole hodgepodge story to cover it up. Whatever it was, the detective was never seen again. And after a while, people just stopped talking about it. Then, one night, I'm sat here with your lovely grandmother, having our usual nightcap. And we hear the most blood-curdling scream you could ever imagine. I bolt upright at the mere sound of it. It's coming from down the lane. So I grab a light and goes to investigate. There's a big commotion outside the car. Well, you know, the uh, a big old house on the corner here. Um, half the village is there. As I approach, I can see who's been doing the screaming. It's little Carol, the youngest of the Carter children. They've covered her in a blanket and sat her down on a knoll. The only thing more horrifying than what I was about to see in that house was the look on her face. But what was in the house, Grandad? The Carter family. Well, what was left of them. Five of them there were. They torn them to pieces. Who had Grandad? He's had many names over the years. Oh, I know you and your friends have that uh, funny name for him. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, old Scratch? Old Scratcher? O old Scratcher, aye, oh, yeah. Back in my day, we knew him as Red Eye Jack. Anyways, after that, no one doubted the mills. All the missing cats. Mutilated farm animals. That all now made sense. Old Scratcher, as you call him, was out there. And he was as real as me and you. Oh, no, so many men were lost trying to destroy old Jack. Oh, why do you think so many of your friends grew up without a dad? 
soon enough it became clear that whatever was out there would have swallowed us whole if we didn't keep it at bay. You know, boy, have you ever heard the expression, it's better to lose a few fingers than the whole arm? No, I don't think so. Well, that's a phrase that we've stuck to in this village, and it's put us in good stead over these years. Now, to tonight. It's your 18th birthday. I, I didn't call you here to make you a fancy old dinner or take you for your first point at the pub. <laughs> no, no doubt you've already had plenty of those, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Look at ye, your eyes glistening in the firelight. Still the eyes of a little boy. But looking back at me, I, I now see the face of a man. And when you're a man, you take on certain responsibilities. Wouldn't you agree, boy? I, I guess so. Some responsibilities are fun. Oh, when you're a man, the world is yours. You can build your own home, set your own path in life. But eventually, the veil of childhood has to be lifted. And you must see with your own eyes that life is not as pretty as a picture. And that underneath the most beautiful meadow lies the darkest of soil. Uh, there are some things a man has to do which are pain and nothing else. And he has to do it, and only him, because he is a man and that is what he has to do. I... I understand, Grandad. No. No, you don't. Follow me, boy. Team up. Why have we shown you the outhouse before? Uh, no. Is that where you keep your gardening tools, Grandad? Oi. Every other night of the year. Evening, lads. Evening, Tom. Lovely weather, ain't it? All right, Robin. Both that, sir. Thank you for your time on this miserable evening. Hope we didn't keep you long. Not at all. It's got to be done. Well, I understand this young Robin here is 18. Uh, I. <laughs> this is a special night, man. How's he doing? Well, he's got a bit emotional. I, I think it's finally hit him. <laughs> well, be warned, he's a bit of a crier this one. <laughs> All right, lads. We'll take it from here. We'll see you at the monument. Thanks, Tom. Be strong, lad. I know you can do it. This is for everyone. Just remember that. Before we go in, lad, steal yourself. Reserve your pity. It might be upsetting, but deep down he knows why we're doing this. Don't talk to him and don't look him in the eye. Grandad? What is this? This, boy, is how we protect our precious parish. <laughs> Who's that? Who's there? Just me, Kevin. Oh, I brought something to calm you. I have my own cupboard. Don't want it. Don't want any food from you. Come on, Kev. I'm trying to make this easier for you. Then take off this fucking blindfold. I can't see a thing. That's enough, Kevin. Candad, what is this? Robin, I told you to be quiet. Is that Robin? 
R Robin Graysmith. It's me, Kevin Blakemore. I know you. You come in my shop. I, mean, I sold you books since you were a little. Ow! If you don't hold your tongue, you'll be getting the wax again. Granddad, this is wrong. That is the last time I'm going to tell you to be quiet. I told you this would be hard. But this is your responsibility. Now, it's all of our responsibility. I don't want this responsibility. You don't get to choose. It's all down to luck. Luck? What do you mean, luck? Next year, it could be me in those chains. And the year after, it could be you. But this isn't about us. It's about keeping old Jack at bay for the good of this village. I told you. If it wasn't dealt with, this evil would swallow us all up. I don't understand. We made a deal. Our village would be safe if we offered him a bountiful meal every autumn. This year, our offering is Kevin. What? But why him? I told you, it's down to luck. Every year, we have a ballot. We all collect in the church, and it's like the lottery, if you will. You all take a number, take a seat, and you pray your name isn't called. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Uh, Farmer Dodd, Farmer Dodd, please be seated. Thank you. I'll keep this brief. I know I don't have to remind you all, but... What we're doing tonight is for our precious parish. To whoever is called out, I say to you, don't succumb to fear, but take pride in your sacrifice, as you are following in the footsteps of our Lord. Maeve, if you would. Very well. Thank you, Maeve. Well, the number is... Number 53, Kevin Blakemore. No, 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 no. Thank you, Tom. Now, everyone, stay calm, be still. This is a painful necessity. I'm sure Kevin will eventually be content with what he's doing for us all. Lads, fix the restraints and escort him to the holding pen. Now, Tom, as always, I'd like a word to go over the details. As for the rest of you, I hope you'll stay here for a little while longer and join me for a little service where we will pray for our brave Kevin. You pray your name isn't called, but if it is, you have a duty to fill. I only wish Kevin could see it that way. Granddad. I know, I know. It's hard now. This will never be easy. But I know one day you'll understand. Granddad? What is that? It's time.
Stay back, beast. Stay back, beast. 